So uh, my name's Tony Sanchez. Okay. I guess I should explain the crutches. I uh, fractured my femur recently. Yeah, biggest bone in your body. I had to have surgery. I don't know anybody who's recovered from surgery, but in the hospital, they have two main questions. The first one is, what's your level of pain? And they ask you on a scale of one to 10. I think that's a little wrong because pain is relative, right? It should be your reaction to the pain. So. Like if it's an ouch, it's a one. If it's a five, if it's like, oh shit, then it's a five. If you start dropping F-bombs, you've hit 10. When I fracture my femur, I use the F word as a noun, a verb, an adjective, and an adverb in the same sentence. The other big question they ask you, this is the nurses wake up every four hours. Have you had a bowel movement? I haven't had anybody interested in my bowel movement since I was potty trained. Now here's where a chart can really be useful, because once you say you have had a bowel movement, they want you to describe it. I'll call it the Tony Poop chart. On one, you could have like an image of a splatter. At five, you could have like Mr. Softy, you know, saucer of chocolate ice cream. And maybe at a 10 is like a Tootsie Roll, you know? It just makes it less awkward when you have to describe your poop. So, um, I was born in the projects in Queens. I know the first comedian was from the projects as well. Um, but at the age of six, my dad decided to, me to move us to an all-white suburb here in Long Island so I can get a better education. I was one of three brown kids in my town. The other two were my sisters. <laughs> so my father didn't want my mother, who speaks perfect Spanish and perfect English, to teach us Spanish in case we developed an accent and stuck out. I was like, Dad, I've got brown skin, I've got an afro, and my last name is Sanchez. They're gonna figure it out. But my dad was right. The schools on Long Island were much better than the city. I learned so many new words and phrases, mostly directed at me. Spick, jungle bunny, nigger. And that was just in first grade from my teachers. Not good. So it's that time of year, uh, the Girl Scouts are out there hawking their high sugar, high fat, non-nutritional cookies. I live in Connecticut, so they actually let the Girl Scouts set up a table outside the supermarket, right? I don't know if they do that out here in Long Island. So, uh, you know, I know the deal. I'm walking up to my stop and shop and I see little Katie, she's about 11 or 12. She's got like that sash, you know, with all the badges. I mean, it's loaded with badges. This kid's going places. So I walk up to stop and shop, and she goes, Hey, mister, uh, would you like to buy some Girl Scout cookies? And I'm like, you know, no thanks, sweetie. I'm trying to watch my weight. Oh, are you sure? Because uh, if you buy some Girl Scout cookies, we'll make sure nothing happens to your car. <laughs> I said, uh, what do you mean? Well, you know, there's these shopping carts, and they get loose. They could scratch your car. You buy some cookies. We'll make sure that doesn't happen. I'm a New Yorker, right? I understand what little Katie's saying to me. I just had no idea the Girl Scouts had a badge for extortion. What would that badge look like? You know, like a broken leg, maybe a hand with a lead pipe, and money being changing hands. Like I have a 2023 a Subaru. I didn't want her to mess up my car, so I ended up buying three boxes of Samoas, two boxes of Thin Mints, and a box of Tagalongs. I didn't even know what Tagalongs were at the time, but little Katie insisted I try them. Um, <laughs> so um, so um, my wife and I, um, well, you saw my wife earlier. She's white, she's blonde hair, blue eyes, she's very funny, I love her. So um, we were gardening, and um, this was before I got injured, obviously. And uh, we, we were going to go to the nursery to pick up some new plants. My wife decides she wants to take a shower before we go to the nursery. And I said, you know, I'll stay dirty because somebody's got to carry the plants to the uh, car. So she comes out, she's got a white skirt, floral blouse, you know, Michael Kors sunglasses. And I've got like a long sleeve shirt with sweat stains and mud. Um, you know, I'm, uh, uh, I've got mud on my sneakers. So we go to the nursery, and when we get there, I'm pulling the little fucking wagon, you know, to carry the plants, right? And she's walking ahead of me. And all these middle-aged white women are looking at us, and they're like, oh, they think she's a rich white lady. And I'm her Hispanic gardener. I'm gonna have fun with this. So 
So I started shouting out, Senora Vicky, muy bonita, no? And then my best high school Spanish from remembering colors, Senora Vicky, amarillo. Yo, Senora Vicky, Ross. Senora Vicky, azul. And then all the people looking at us, you know, we're online waiting to pay for the plants. The whole bunch of just happened to be a lot of middle-aged white women at this nursery. And I look at Vicky, I say, Bethany, kiss me. Bethany mucho. And I grab her, and at first she resists. Not that she doesn't love me, but she's clean and I'm filthy. So finally she acquiesces, I give her a deep kiss. All the ladies on the line look startled. I go put the plants in the car. When I return the wagon, I'm mobbed by all these white women. They want my business card. They want my fucking tent to work on it. So I recently went for a colonoscopy. It was my first time. I was a little nervous. One, because I'm over 50. Two, there was a history of cancer in my family. And three, um, in my earlier days, I worked as a drug mule for the Colombian cartel. <laughs> I used to go to Medellin cartel. I used to go to Medellin, Colombia, ingest cocaine-filled condoms, fly back to New York, pass those condoms, and give them to my handler. So it was a crazy period of time. I didn't know, you know, I didn't know how many I had ingested versus how many I had passed. If you ever go on for a colonoscopy, they put you under general anesthesia. So when I was waking up from the anesthesia, my doctor seemed very excited. He said, Mr. Sanchez, Mr. Sanchez, the good news, Mr. Sanchez. There's no polyps in the colon. So I've been up here five, six minutes. I feel like I've gotten to know you. Uh, I'm gonna admit something. I suffer from sleep apnea. And I know what you're thinking. Holy shit, the femur, the colonoscopy, now the sleep apnea, where's this going? Sleep apnea is a condition where uh, you stop breathing, you know, um, and it's not good. At best, you, it's a very bad snoring. At worst, you stop breathing and it wakes you up in the middle of the night. So the solution they have, you should take notes, my friend. So the solution they have is like it's a mask, right? And the mask goes over your nose, and then there's a tube that goes from the mask to a unit on the table that pushes air to help keep your airway open. And it goes like this. all night long. Great for breathing, not great for a romantic evening. Unless you're married to my wonderful, sexy, and very imaginative wife, so now we incorporate the CPAP machine and our role playing in the bedroom. So take notes, guys. The first scenario is I'm a fighter pilot. I crash land on an island. I crash land on an island filled with horny women. The second scenario, I'm an astronaut with my mask. I crash land on a planet filled with horny women. The third scenario, I'm a dying patient in a hospital with one last wish in a hospital filled with horny women. I don't like that last scenario because inevitably my wife turns off the, Nurse Vicky turns off the breathing machine. She puts a pillow over my face and she encourages me to go into the light, which is the light I see from Charlie back there. My time's up. Thank you so much. I'm